Hey fellow workers, my name is Kim Siever. Welcome back to my channel. In the age of rapid job turnover and ever evolving career landscapes, the notion of changing jobs as a means to escape work exploitation seems intuitive. After all, if a job is unsatisfactory or exploitative, why not simply move on to greener pastures? However, the reality is far more complex. Despite the autonomy and agency that individual job changes may offer, they won't solve systemic issues deeply entrenched within labor markets. One of the prevailing myths surrounding job changes is the assumption of a level playing field where workers possess equal opportunities to seek better employment conditions. This idea the realistic notion ignores the systemic barriers that impede workers' ability to exercise genuine choice. Factors such as geographical constraints, lack of access to education and skills training, and discriminatory hiring practices can severely limit a workers' options. Plus, industries dominated by exploitative labor practices often offer limited alternatives, leaving workers trapped in a cycle of precarious employment. Worker exploitation thrives within environments where power differentials between employers and employees are starkly pronounced. In such settings, individual job changes do little to address the structural imbalance of power. Employers wield significant control over wages, working conditions, and job security, leaving workers vulnerable to exploitation, even in seemingly competitive job markets. The fear of retaliation or blacklisting further undermines the ability of workers to challenge exploitative practices, perpetuating a cycle of silence and compliance. The prevalence of systemic worker exploitation is intricately linked to broader patterns of structural inequality and economic precarity. Marginalized communities, including people of color, women, immigrants, members of the queer community, and low-income individuals are disproportionately affected by exploitative labor practices. For these groups, the decision to change jobs is often overshadowed by the pressing need for economic stability and survival. In addition, limited access to social safety nets and affordable health care through extended health plans, for example, exacerbates the risks associated with job changes, forcing many workers to endure exploitation out of sheer necessity. In an increasingly interconnected global economy, the outsourcing of labor-intensive industries has intensified the exploitation of workers across international supply chains. While individual job changes may provide temporary relief for some workers, the pervasive nature of globalized exploitation undermines the efficacy of such actions. Corporations driven by profit motives, often prioritize cost-cutting measures at the expense of labor rights, perpetuating a race to the bottom, and workers bear the brunt of exploitative practices. Without concerted efforts to hold transnational corporations accountable, the cycle of exploitation persists unabated. Systemic worker exploitation is facilitated by legislative loopholes and regulatory failures that enable employers to circumvent labor protections with impunity. While changing jobs may offer short-term respite from immediate grievances, for a single worker does little to address the root causes of regulatory laxity and corporate impunity. This is probably one of the reasons why I'll never be a conservative again. Everything is seen as individual actions. If you're exploited, then just find another job. Problem solved. Except the problem still exists. Your taking yourself out of the problem doesn't make the problem go away. It just removes it from your life. Out of sight, out of mind. Meanwhile, the co-workers who stayed behind still have to deal with that exploitation. And that's assuming you aren't exploited at your new job. After all, exploitation is built into capitalism. Reduce input costs to maximize profit. Giving your workers raises increases input costs, as does upgrading their workspace to make it safer, as does hiring more workers to give everyone time off, and so on. And that's to say nothing of the fact that profit is what you get for charging customers more for the products they buy than you pay to the workers who built those products. And paying workers less for their labor than what you charge the customer is present in nearly every company. Without robust enforcement mechanisms and meaningful penalties for labor code violations, exploitative employers remain emboldened to prioritize profit over the well-being of their workers. Individual job changes thus become nothing more than a band-aid solution to systemic issues that require comprehensive policy reforms and institutional oversight. Perhaps the most compelling argument against the efficacy of individual job changes is the transformative potential of collective action and solidarity among workers. 
History has shown that meaningful change arises not from isolated acts of defiance, but from collective mobilization and advocacy for systemic reforms. By uniting across industries and leveraging collective bargaining power, workers can challenge entrenched systems of exploitation and demand equitable treatment from employers and policymakers alike. In doing so, they dismantle the narrative of individual responsibility and confront the structural injustices that perpetuate worker exploitation. While the impulse to seek refuge from worker exploitation through individual job changes is understandable, it is ultimately an inadequate response to systemic issues deeply embedded within labor markets. True liberation from exploitation requires a holistic approach that addresses the root causes of inequality, power imbalances, and regulatory failures. By advocating for structural reforms, promoting collective action, and centering the voices of marginalized workers, we can strive towards a future where dignity, fairness, and justice prevail in every workplace. Solidarity.